nation's most festive time of the year is underway. And with it, a parade of football's traditional rivalries. For more than 20 years, college fans have feasted on Nebraska and Oklahoma. The Huskers and Sooners were the founding fathers of the modern-day running football attack. The game has featured Heisman winners and legendary runners. And once a year at holiday time, the spirit of those pigskin pilgrims is rekindled. Gary Gibbs has started a new era of Sooner football. He still has the rugged running attack, but all eyes in Oklahoma are on freshman quarterback Cale Gundy. Meanwhile, Nebraska has annihilated all of its opponents except one, and Tom Osborne has the Cornhuskers headed right back to New Year's Day. It's Nebraska and Oklahoma coming up next. It's a CFA Friday, and we welcome you to the harvested plains of Oklahoma. You know, the cold, wintry months are straight ahead. But in the meantime, the kissing cousins of the Big Eight are about to meet right out in the backyard. So pull up a chair and check out this special holiday edition of college football. It's 10th ranked Nebraska against the Oklahoma Sooners. Turkey and dressing on Thursday. The appetite returns on Friday. They're lined up for hot dogs and hamburgers outside Owen Field here in Norman, Oklahoma. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, and all of us at CBS Sports hope you're experiencing a joyous Thanksgiving weekend. Today, you're going to see 10th-ranked Nebraska attempt to win its 10th game of the year. The Huskers have lost only one time this year, and that was to number one-ranked Colorado. And while Nebraska is going to a New Year's Day bowl game to take on Georgia Tech and the Citrus, Oklahoma is not going bowling. They're 7-3 and three on the year, and they have an exciting freshman quarterback named Cale Gundy, who today will be out to gun down the mighty Cornhuskers. Part of our caravan on the college football coverage includes our favorite studio duo, and they're riding up right now near game time. Let's take it across the plains and bring in Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. You know, when you come out to a game like this and you talk to fans like Nebraska fans, with Nebraska being 9-1 and one and ranked 10th, you find a lot of support for a playoff this year. I think the way things have gone and they're really not being a clear-cut number one team, there is a pronounced cry this year for a playoff. And I think you see in this past week, coaches, You're probably coaches, Blue no, Holtz, Hayden Fry saying, no, hey, maybe we should be able to put something in. Maybe we need a playoff format to settle this thing. Now, how would you do it, though? Because you'd have to start out slowly. You couldn't start out like the NCAA basketball tournament. I think what will happen is the bowls will stay intact, and they will put together a ranking system, AP, UPI, maybe some kind of blue ribbon panel to pick the top four teams after the bowls are played. So I think we'll start off with a final four, and it'll take off from there. Okay, we've got our tickets for the game. We're actually going to watch one this season in the stands. The only problem is, is that your seat is on the Nebraska side. Well, I don't think it matters much. I don't think I have a home side in the Big 8 this year. <laughs> All right, we will be back to Norman, Oklahoma after a message and a word from your local station. This is really weird. I have to shampoo a lot, and every time I do, my hair gets wet, but then my scalp gets dry, tight, and itchy. Get ready for Wheel of Fortune, tonight at 7 on Channel 2. We're back in Norman, Oklahoma. Come take a ride with us on the Sooner Scooter. Thanksgiving to you, Tim Brand. All right, Jim, it is tradition here at Oklahoma, like it is at so many schools, to honor its seniors on the final home regular season game of the year. Sooner fans are saluting the seniors now, even as we speak. But ironically today, it'll be a young freshman by the name of Kale Gundy who will have more to say about whether Oklahoma wins or loses than any other player on this field. The coaches here 
have a lot of trust in this guy. Last year at this time, he was a parade high school All-American, the most sought-after high school quarterback in the land. As a matter of fact, the coaches have changed the game plan from three yards in a cloud of dust to where Cale Gundy will throw now maybe 20 times in a game. If the name Gundy sounds familiar, it is. His brother Mike Gundy, the most prolific passer in the history of Oklahoma State University. As a matter of fact, on this Thanksgiving weekend, young Cale wants to send a message to Mike and thank him for paving the way. I think I kind of got an early lesson in college football, just being around my older brother Mike and, and watching a lot of film and hanging around the coaching's office. I want to win the game for a lot of reasons, but one of, one of the many reasons I want to win this game is for my brother. Uh, you know, he never had the chance to beat Nebraska. You know, they had uh, two or three great seasons where they played Nebraska very good, and I kind of want to go out and, and win this one for my brother. Mike Gundy is here today, and so is the rest of the Oklahoma Sooner team. Here they come. in the country, certainly one of the quickest. And for more on that, let's take you across the field now. Here's John Dockery. Doc? And thank you, Tim. Tom Osborne would certainly agree with you. He said that this is one of the fastest and quickest defenses he's seen in Nebraska in some 30 years. But you don't just measure a team by its quickness, by its speed, by its size, by its strength, but rather by its heart and its spirit. And in Nebraska, that's epitomized by their defensive tackle, Kenny Walker, who has overcome his deafness, who has learned how to sign, who has learned how to communicate with his teammates without his ears to become an all-star performer. Certainly an inspiration to his team and to his fans in Lincoln who gave him a standing ovation with a silent clap. Kenny Walker acknowledged by signing I love you. And now Walker on this Thanksgiving day through his interpreter Mimi Man tells us what he has to be thankful for. I'm thankful that I could come to Nebraska with a good program. I'm thankful for Coach Osborne, for Mimi Mann, because they offered me interpreters. I need to learn in college, and I'm thankful for what I've learned. I'm reminded from Coach Osborne, the first time when he recruited me, he offered me an interpreter. And here's the lady sitting in front of me, Mimi Mann. I'm thankful for coming to Nebraska. So much warmth, so much to be thankful for from a man who some would say has less. And Jim Nance, if the measure of a man has something to do with the obstacles he's overcome, then Kenny Walker is indeed a very large man and an excellent football player. He's a giant. Tom Osborne leading out the Huskers, ranked 10th in America. of the Big Reds, one of college football's classic rivalries, Oklahoma and Nebraska, coming up next on CBS. CBS Sports presents college football, live from Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma. It's the Nebraska Cornhuskers versus the Oklahoma Sooners. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Goodyear, the tires that help keep you and your family in touch with the road, rain or shine. And by Bud Dry, why ask why? Try Bud Dry for refreshment that's beyond question. Ba, 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 the reverend. <laughs> what do you think Marla's going to do when we show up? Well, hopefully she'll feed us. <laughs> It's good to see you, you know, it's been too long. One day, the most important thing in your world could be your tires. That's why Goodyear engineered the Invicta GS to help keep you in touch with the road. I guess they're home. <laughs> I miss you. I miss you, too. We like to say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. On a night like this, you'll be grateful for a safety feature found in almost every Chrysler car you rent from Thrifty. A safety feature Thrifty hopes you'll never see. It's an airbag. That's right, an airbag. 
In about half the time it takes to blink your eye, this airbag can inflate and save your life. At Thrifty, we take safety as seriously as savings. Thrifty, Thrifty Car Rental, because it's your money. They're at your Christmas store. Sears. Top brand electronics like the sporty one inch LXI TV with remote and MTS stereo surround sound. Save $100. Only at Sears Brand Central. For Christmas. Toasters? Down? Up. Want to know any more? Ask Ace. That's what I do. This Proctor Silex 12 cup coffee maker is just $7.97, and Ace 70 light indoor light sets are only $3.77. Hey, Ace is the place for me. Before they could walk, they wanted to dance. Before they could talk, they wanted to sing. But they needed a lot of heart and desire before they could get to Broadway and make it on a chorus line. Now this Broadway legend is back and on tour. But if you want tickets, get to the box office early and get out your Visa card. Because this show won't be in town long. And it won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Absolutely ideal weather conditions for Oklahoma and Nebraska. There's a lot of vitality in these clear skies. As the folks at Owen Field get ready for Oklahoma to kick away to Nebraska. The Sooners won the toss and deferred. So we'll see the Huskers on offense right away. Tyrone Hughes to the near side. Nate Turner flank alongside of him. Oklahoma 7-3 and three on the year. The Sooners field, they were just two missed field goals away from having an identical 9-1 and one record with Nebraska coming into this contest. Jim, you talk about how this game is not for the title of the conference, and yet down on the field, it is electric. Brad Waddell gets us started. Hughes on one bounce. will down it in the end zone. It's a touchback. And Mickey Joseph will lead out the Huskers. He's a junior quarterback from Marrero, Louisiana. Only five feet, nine inches tall. Joined in the backfield by fullback Lance Lewis and Leotis Flowers, who needs only 73 yards today to go over 1,000. Bostic and Nate Turner are the receivers. And the starting tight end is William Washington, although we'll see a lot of a freshman, Johnny Mitchell, who has caught seven touchdowns, although he does not start. on the pitch and a gain of three runs into Reggie Barnes and Frank Blevins and how about this Nebraska offensive line Tim well it's interesting you've got Adele right there the technician at center on both sides of him you've got Shields and Wanick now he is small for an offensive lineman Wanick is he's only sick 245 pounds outside you've got Hunt and Barboon double tight end formation Johnny Mitchell comes in to join William Washington as the double tight ends. Second and seven, they go inside with Lance Lewis and maybe two yards. Scott Evans helped on the tackle, along with Stacy Dillard, but it's Corey Mayfield who was the nose tackle for the Sooners defense. Jim, this, lack, this defense lacks depth. It plays hard, but it is limited. You see the rest of them, Dillard and Evans. Evans is uh, all-conference Big 8, just announced yesterday, and then Barnes and Good outside of them. Levins and Bowden are the linebackers. They're very thin at linebackers. Chris Wilson is out with a foot sprain. Levins has had a shoulder problem. He's just now coming back. Third down play. Joseph rolling. And with Evans all over him, he just throws it away incomplete. Tom Osborne in his 18th year as the head coach at Nebraska, the winningest active coach in college football by percentage. Mike Stiggy, a sophomore from Washington, Kansas, will punt for the Huskers. Otis Taylor will return. Low snap, Stiggy fields it. On one hop, Otis Taylor will try the right side. And lose yardage on the return. They'll spot the football at the 23 of Oklahoma. Scott Baldwin, a backup running back on the special teams tackle. 
And now here comes Kale Gundy, the freshman we've talked about from Midwest City, Oklahoma. That's right up the road north of Norman. Joined in the backfield by Mike McKinley and Duell Brewer, who's the leading rusher for the Sooners, nearly 800 yards on the year. Warren and Otis Taylor, you just saw him on the return. They're the receivers. And six foot six, Adrian Cooper is the tight end. Kenyon Rashid will start at fullback as they line up in the eye. Duell Brewer for a gain of about four. Reggie Cooper made the stop. Told you Gundy is from Midwest City, Oklahoma. So is the starting center from the same high school, Randy Wallace for Oklahoma. Jim, he also could be the most improved player on this Oklahoma team, Wallace. And outside of him, you've got Madis, the strongest player, academic All-Big Eight, and the captain. Sawatsky outside of him. And then there's Miller and Manning outside. Now, Manning's about as big as you'll see as a college player. 6'2", 335 pounds. But Houston, who's been hurt with a knee, moves up and gets the start today. Second and seven. Brewer again in the open. Past the 40 and bumped out of bounds at the 43-yard line. First down for the Sooners. Watch the right side of this offensive line. We told you it's big, it's strong. You see Houston there get his block, push him inside, and then the hole opens up and he just explodes right through it. One thing about Oklahoma, it can run and run effectively, and they will test your perimeter. As soon as you stock up on the perimeter, bring up your safety, get your outside linebackers closing down, the middle becomes soft and they'll attack you there. Brewer was last year's freshman of the year in the Big Eight, an award this year that was given to Cale Gundy just last night. On first and ten, here's the freshman hot shot, completing his pass to Taylor into Nebraska territory, inside of the 40. A gain of 18. Talked about Cale Gundy a lot in the past. Most freshmen don't know if the ball is pumped or stuffed. He is very poised, confident, and competitive. This is about as difficult a pass as you can make, running to your left and throwing back without any leverage. And he puts it right there for Otis Taylor. Taylor, by the way, starting for Ted Long, who's banged up and out of the game. Long out with a wrist injury. Gundy, only the third true freshman to ever start at quarterback for Oklahoma. Troy Aikman, remember, he played here first before UCLA. And Jamel Holloway were the other two. And Brewer gains about five to the 34, hit by Pat Engelbert. And speaking of Engelbert, it starts right there, middle guard, with the junior from Columbus, Nebraska. He's got to be classified as an overachiever. He had a week off, helped his shoulder, which was banged up. Then you've got Sims and Kenny Walker. Doc told you about Kenny Walker early in the, the telecast. Only 5% body fat, tremendous talent. Then Petco and Tyrants. Hill and Kroll are about as good as you'll see. They could run away from Broderick Thomas, but you've got now duo guys outside that are just as good. So now you have to pick your, your spots. On second and five, Rashid stuffed after a yard. Continues to fight, and he fumbled the football. Nebraska has it. Mike Kroll comes up with it. again Rashid fighting for that extra yardage 238 pounds he gets stood up by the linebacker there's Jefferson number 98 and then there's 40 and 30 right there Ty Rance but his knee hit I'm not sure that's a fumble matter of fact it's not they're gonna say that Oklahoma maintains the football you know he was stuffed long enough where they had to have blown the whistle Kroll came up with it but it's Oklahoma football they're going to say he was whistled down before the exchange. So on third down, they go inside again. Oklahoma comes up about a yard shy. Brewer had the run. Mike Petko hit him. Jim, let me make this point. Oklahoma attacked the perimeter early, then came back and hit the middle, just as we expected they would do. They watched a lot of film of the Colorado game against Nebraska, and in that fourth quarter when Colorado came back to win it, they penetrated the middle and got all their yardage up through the middle blasts. So now, a field goal attempt coming up for R.D. Lasher with the punter, Brad Waddell, holding. This is the last game for Lasher. He's been the kicker for three years from Plano, Texas. 49-yard attempt. No good.
Gary Gibbs still encourages his young Sooners to come up empty on their opening possession. Unfortunately, the Wagner's new vacuum cleaner was not the most trouble-free in its class. Neither was the new refrigerator, nor the new lawnmower they got such a good deal on. Thank goodness they made one new purchase that was the most trouble-free in its class. Two years running, the Toyota Corolla. Maybe you ought to just let that lawn die out. I know what you do for me, Toyota. America's three favorite bachelors are back. Oh. And they're having the time of their lives Jesus, trying to stay single. I'm impotent. Oh, I find that so charming in a man. Three men and a little lady. Oh, shut up and take me. Rated PG. And from Walt Disney Pictures, Siskel and Ebert call the rescuers down under a rousing adventure. Two thumbs up. The animation was phenomenal. You're just going to love this film. Disney's all new The Rescuers Down Under. Rated G. And three men and a little lady, both playing separately. Why does a man have to do what a man has to do? Two, three, four. Dry, but dry. Cold filtered for smooth draft taste. Dry brewed for no aftertaste. Refreshing proof that men still know what they're doing. Buck stuck with Macy's Troop of Bluebells. What did you used to do on Bluebell Saturdays? The same thing I'm doing now. Sleeping out to see my boyfriend. Uncle Buck, tonight. Mickey Joseph is the Nebraska quarterback, and he has an angle on this rivalry against Oklahoma. It means a lot to us. It's still Oklahoma-Nebraska rivalry was going on for the longest, and it's a... It, it's, so far, it's been a clean game since I've been here. There's no, no dirty things going on during the game, and that's the best thing about playing a game like this is that everybody, you know, is fair and about Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Nebraska that it's a hard-hitting game and it's a physical game, and if you're not ready to get hit, don't put your pads on. It'll be a tough game for Mickey Joseph, too. He's listed as 5'11". He's really only 5'9". Didn't throw well against Colorado, took some heat for that. When he does throw, it's usually on the rollout to give him a better view. First and 10 for Nebraska from its 31 after a missed field goal. They give it to Derek Brown off a wing. And Brown is wrestled down by Joe Bowden. Derek Brown, number six, decided to change his jersey number before the game today. Played as number 27 all season long. Freshman from Eric Anderson changed his too, Jim. I asked some of the people on the sidelines why they changed just before game time and they couldn't give us an answer. I don't know if their jerseys were missing or what. Second down and eight, we'll call it, for the Huskers. Lewis and Flowers lined up in the eye. <laughs> Sideline route, incomplete. Intended for Tyrone Hughes. Didn't meet the Sooner secondary. Here they are, Darnell Walker starts along with Charles Franks on the corners. And the safeties are Jason Belser and Terry Ray. Terry Ray fills an important position today. He'll have to fill on the option pursuit as paramount against this ball club. Belser, of course, also another key on safety. But Walker's probably the best cover guy, and Charles Franks has been very consistent all year. Pleasant sent wide to the left on third and eight. Turner in motion. Rolling, Joseph, feeling the heat now. Will dance out of the pocket. Look for the first down yardage to the 41. He has it and steps out of bounds. And a flag thrown. Well, there should be because it was a late hit, and Joseph eventually went down on the bench area over there. He just told us it's going to be a hard-hitting game. You better be ready for it. Even on the sidelines, I guess. <laughs> you know, Osborne criticized Joseph after the Minnesota game for freelancing too much. Nebraska won that game 55 to nothing, and he still got a lot of trouble, and he's not getting up. Reggie Barnes is the man who hit him out of bounds. Watch number 40. They're out of bounds right now. You shouldn't even touch him. That sideline's a little bit slippery. I was just down there. It's almost like it's not a hard hit, but a push. And Joseph slid into the bench. Here 
It's a bad sign to bring it out to the gurney. If he has to go out, Mike Grant will come in. He's a junior from Tampa, Florida, who has played a great deal. But Joseph is the guy who is really electric and makes this offense go. There's Grant. Mike Grant loosening up. He'll be coming in for Mickey Joseph when we return. By 10.30 a.m., any business day, one company will guarantee delivery of your overnight air packages. ...where Mickey Joseph is on the uh, ground right now, and it appears as you watch the replay here, he is taken out of bounds, and uh, you see he's being hit fairly hard, and what appears to have happened is that he went right into the bench as he went out of bounds with some momentum, and the early word from here, as they're working on Mickey Joseph right now, is that he broke his left leg, and uh, it's fairly obvious to everyone around here. We have no official report, Jim Nance, but we'll keep you posted from down here. Back to you. You know, we had just heard a few minutes before from Mickey Joseph proclaiming this as a clean, hard-hitting series through the years. No cheap shots, uh, no animosity between the two teams, and he's taken out and apparently very seriously injured on a late hit. We're waiting. Mike Grant will replace him. Talking to Mickey Joseph yesterday, he told us that his mom was making a trip here. She was coming to the ball game and talked to his brother Vance, who's a quarterback at Colorado. He told him Oklahoma hits hard. That was the one thing that Mickey Joseph translated to us. And, uh, boy, what a tragedy. Such a fine young man. We enjoyed really talking with him yesterday, and now the early indication is that it is a broken leg. High school All-American in New Orleans, almost went to Oklahoma. His hero was Jamel Holloway, quarterback at Oklahoma. We are just underway at Owen Field in Norman, Oklahoma for 10th ranked Nebraska against the Sooners of Oklahoma. A beautiful day here, early in the first quarter, and Oklahoma drove on its first possession, missed a field goal. Nebraska with the football for the second time and starting quarterback Mickey Joseph has just been injured. Mike Grant is on the field ready to replace him. We'll come back to Owen Field right after this. and academics together nicely. The Big Eight Conference. Jim Nance, Tim Brandt, John Dockery from Owen Field in Oklahoma. And the word from the sidelines now is Mickey Joseph's left leg has been placed in an inflatable cast. He still remains on the Oklahoma sideline where he was taken out and ran into the bench area. They brought the gurney quickly, so it must have been evident to the paramedics as soon as they got there about Mickey Joseph's leg. As they remove him and Mike Grant prepares. You know, Jerry Godowski, who set the records as a senior quarterback last season, never redshirted, even though he never really saw significant playing time until his final year. There are those who feel that if he had been redshirted, the Huskers would be number one right now, and he'd be sharing time with Mickey Joseph. Mike Grant started the season as the number one quarterback, hurt a knee against Baylor, and set out uh, games two and three against Northern Illinois and Minnesota, then returned against Oregon State and was the Huskers starter in game four, but he's been injured on and off. Again, he was the starter at the beginning of the year, but Mickey Joseph replaced him and played well.
Talking with Kale Gundy there. And again, it was interesting to hear him say yesterday, there has never been any ill feeling between these two teams. Just a great, healthy respect for each other. Tremendous rivalry. Oklahoma players continue to come by and express their best wishes. You see Irvin. Greg Irvin. Wide receiver. Let's go down and get another report from John Dockery. You know, Jim, it was fairly gruesome because when they picked Mickey Joseph up to take him off, as they're doing right now, there was blood on the turf, and they're just washing it off right now. And that would suggest, though certainly not a medical man, that that's a bad break. But there was blood on the turf when they lifted Mickey Joseph up. I'll keep following the story and get back to you. As they continue to pump and inflate the cast on Joseph's leg, we could see him what appeared to be shouting words of encouragement to his team that was huddled near midfield now comes to the line of scrimmage after the 15-yard penalty and the new quarterback Mike Grant first down from the Sooners 39 flowers tackled by Bowden after a gain of about four well you hate to see that to any player I was here years ago on the sidelines when uh, Troy Aikman broke his leg as a quarterback for Oklahoma against Miami and eventually transferred to UCLA and had a big win yesterday with the Dallas Cowboys. Second down six. Junior quarterback Tampa, out of Tampa, Florida, Mike Grant calling the signals. Pitching to Flowers. Scott Evans hit him first. And they're about two yards shy of a first down at the 31-yard line. Jim Leota's Flowers ranks 10th in the NCAA, averaging 115 yards per game. He played a reserve role behind Ken Clark for two years. He's been the Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week a couple of times this year. Says he's tired of not getting enough yardage, wants to be more determined as a runner. And he's, that's going to be his goal today. Probably will top 1,000 yards today. But right now, it's third and three for the Huskers. Run the option with Flowers. Losing yardage back to the 36. Reggie Barnes came up to make the play. Give Barnes credit for the play, but this play was slow in developing. See, right now, Grant pitches too early. He's got to come down the line. He's got to make those guys commit. Reggie Barnes never was taken in by the quarterback. See him? He stops, looks. It's already pitched, and he can go right to the pitch man and make the play. Grant's got to hold the ball, come down the line, make those guys commit one way or the other, and then pitch it or take it up himself. Fourth and seven from the Oklahoma 36. And they're set up now in punt formation with Mike Stiggy. Bypass a 53-yard field goal attempt. Pooch punt attempt. Right into the end zone. They'll spot it at the 20. Tomorrow, the Pitt Panthers will go against red-hot Penn State. The Nittany Lions with eight straight wins, including the victory over number one-ranked Notre Dame last week. That's coming your way beginning at 2 Eastern time here on CBS Sports. Andrea and Mike will start it off with college football today. They're right with us today. They'll be hustling home right after this contest and be in the studio tomorrow to set you up for Pitt and Penn State here on CBS. Second possession of the day for Oklahoma. Rashid remains the fullback, Brewer the tailback. Gundy on the option, and a stick put on him back at the 17 by Travis Hill, a good young player from Carolyn, Texas. Boy, there's one of those outside linebackers we were telling you about. They've got Kroll on one side and Hill on the other. He's mature beyond his years. You mentioned he grew up in Texas. They've got high school systems there where Football is a major part of the life. He's always served the, as an outside guy. He's strong. He's quick. Just played that pitch man that time and made an outstanding defensive play. Coaches say he's very mature for his age. Travis Hill, just a sophomore. Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator at Nebraska, loves him as a player. Second and 13, Gundy. Able to flick it and complete it with the 36. That's an Oklahoma first down. There is a flag, though, Jim. I think it's going to be holding against Oklahoma, so they'll probably bring this one back. 
Wipe out the completion to Adrian Cooper. The tight end. And that will knock Oklahoma back inside of the 10-yard line. Well, you can almost take your pick up front. Watch this now, especially in the middle. Watch Wallace. Wallace will lock on right away. That's a good block right there until he gets that left hand outside of the, the radius of the body. You have to stay in within the shoulders, the width of the shoulders. Looks like Jeff Miller, the left tackle, may have been flagged for it. Second down, 22 for the Sooners. Midway first quarter, no score. On the draw, it's Brewer. Going out of bounds at the 17, a gain of about nine before Cooper bumped him out. You know, the thing about Brewer is he's got such great vision. He's got that low center of gravity. Watch once he gets the ball. He's reading the defense right now. It's almost like a delay, a draw. He steps up in there. Here comes the traffic inside. It closes down, so he just bounces. He's a bounce runner. Gets outside right now. He's got the, the outside leverage and takes it as much as he can up that sideline. Finally knocked out of bounds by Richie Cooper from Lawton, Oklahoma. Third and 13 for the Sooners. Play action and Gundy rifles it to Taylor incomplete. His defender had fallen down. Tyrone Leggett had fallen down and Taylor was open for a moment. Gundy threw that thing about 55 yards. One sideline to the other. Brad Riddell will punt for the first time today. Nate Turner and Tyrone Hughes wait from their own 40. No pressure. Riddell rips this one down to the 38. Here comes Hughes. Hughes shakes free at the 50. And into Oklahoma territory on the good return to the 45, give him 17 yards on the run back before Chris Meltzer made the tackle. Scoreless between Oklahoma and Nebraska in the first quarter. Panasonic presents a new breed of smooth operator. The new smooth operator rechargeable razor unites the old-fashioned closeness of a warm, wet shave with the convenience and no-nick comfort of an electric. Don't try this with any plugged-in razor. Smooth operator wet-dry razors from Panasonic. Smoother than you ever thought you'd be. Today, more people than ever are getting a kick out of this hot shot. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma, where 75,000 sun-drenched fans are enjoying this game. Nothing, nothing, tie at the moment. And I just wanted to update you on Mickey Joseph, Nebraska's quarterback. He did go out of bounds. He did. What happened? He may not have a broken leg. He actually hit the bench at high speeds and has a very, very deep cut. And at this moment in time, I just came out of the locker room, they are x-raying to find out if there is indeed a break as well as that laceration. That's where the blood came from along the sidelines. But in either case, uh, Mickey Joseph, Joseph will, be, will not be back at Jim Nance. You know, actually, that may sound crazy, but that's good news. If the bone's not broken, sew it up. From the 45 of Oklahoma, Lance Lewis gains two. Charles Franks and friends bring him down at the 43. <laughs> Nebraska's season and their schedule has been often criticized, but the lone loss was to Colorado on November the third and in that game they led the Buffaloes 12 nothing going into the fourth quarter and allowed 27 points from the Buffaloes in the final period of course Colorado now ranked number one and already the big eight champs heading to the Orange Bowl Scott Baldwin in the game play action fake to Baldwin and the pass on the turf to Johnny Mitchell everyone's looking around I don't know if one of the officials wants to make the call they're gonna say it's complete Give him 11 yards. 
I tell you, that's a heck of a catch, too, by the freshman tight end. He's got 10 catches coming into this game, seven touchdowns. That's his first one of this game. Just hurt his uh, completion to touchdown ratio, though, with that one. <laughs> He'll take it, though. A Acrobatic bit. catch. You know, he's a half foot taller than most cornerbacks. He's six foot five. Talking about Johnny Mitchell, number 86. Great freshman tight end for Nebraska. Picks up the first down for him. They run it with Baldwin. Baldwin replacing Leotis Flowers and picking up about seven. Corey Mayfield on the hit. Baldwin actually was the tailback against Kansas, the Cornhuskers' last game, which was two weeks ago. And he gained 170 yards and two touchdowns. Flowers missed the game with an ankle injury, and Baldwin admirably and ably filled in for him. You mentioned how close Flowers is to 1,000 yards. Came into this game with 950. Baldwin at course 565 yards, and Derek Brown with another 400 yards. That's why Nebraska leads the nation in rushing. They can clinch the rushing title today. On second and two, Grant dives for the first inside of the 20. 450 to go in the first quarter. Scoreless to this point. That's a lot of backs with good yardage. Well, you mentioned they need 170 yards today to be the nation's leading rushing team. They had that title six times in the 80s. It is a prolific team as far as running the football. Their shortcoming has always been with the passing game. First and 10 for Nebraska. Grant across the middle. Has his man, Nate Turner. And a gain of about five. One thing this team would love to do today is get a touchdown. Nate Turner's way. He's never scored a touchdown. He's a junior from Chicago, Illinois. He's had opportunities, but never found the end zone. You see the protection up front. He gets all kinds, and Grant just has to throw it underneath the coverage. We said that one of the weaknesses of this team was their passing, and we're talking strictly numbers. When they do throw, it's very effective because of the option game. And that's why most of the receivers have very high per catch average yardage wise. Baldwin, Lewis, and Tyrone Hughes lined up in the backfield. On second and five, Baldwin short of the first by about three yards, in fact. Watch him stack it up now on the left side, and you'll see that the play trying to draw it and won't go but anyway you'll see how the play now will get stacked up immediately come over that way with what they call the L set they knock it inside they get rid of the blockers real quickly and coach just makes the play just took his blocker got rid of him and made the tackle third down and three the pitch to Baldwin oh as he hit hard well short of the first Stacy Dillard and Joe Bowden combine on the hit Field goal time for Nebraska. Well, one thing this defense will do, it'll run to the football. It's not as quick as Nebraska's, but look at Coach right there, number 41, scraping down the line. He gets cut, but then the inside pursuit comes from Joe Bowden, 45. He gets a lot of help. All you have to do is slow him down, take him out of the rhythm, and then you get everybody else pursuing and taking him down. They run to the football extremely well, and you have to against this offense. Left-footed booter Greg Barrios will attempt a 30-yarder. This will give him the school kick-scoring record if he makes it. Barrios from 30. Has the angle on it. It's good. He just surpassed Rich Sanger from back in the early 70s as the all-time leading kick scorer in Cornhusker history. set the lineup for you this weekend on the NFL coverage beginning with the now it's regional coverage but a large part of the country will get this blockbuster the Giants against Philadelphia and the Eagles are coming on now with four straight wins they'll challenge the undefeated Giants a rematch of the opening day game which the Giants won 
I was impressed the way Philadelphia came back against Atlanta this past week. Cunningham, of course, is starting to throw the ball a little bit more, not trying to do it all himself, but he is extremely effective. I think Philadelphia is going to give the Giants all they can handle. I'm looking for the upset there. I think the Eagles beat them. You folks on the West, many of you will be getting a game later in the day. The Rams against San Francisco. 49ers trying to set the all-time NFL record for consecutive wins. Going after number 19. Rams and Eagles out to spoil that showdown on December 3rd at Candlestick between the Giants and 49ers. Brian Bennett kicks away. Brewer has it. Brewer races to the 25 and bounced down by Matt Penler. 3-0 Nebraska with two minutes and change to go here in the first. Ball spotted at the 24-yard line. Oklahoma's ball, first and 10. Jim, I think Oklahoma's got to get more aggressive offensively. They got to get Kale Gundy into the ball game. He's got to throw a little bit more, the short yardage type things, high dink and dunk, just get him mentally into the ball game, get him throwing a little bit. He's one for two, 18 yards. He's got to throw a little bit more than that. He also has to challenge the corners a little bit on the option. Comes out with a new look. No tight end. On first down, McKinley is the fullback. That was a run by Ernest Williams, a freshman from Aurora, Colorado. And no gain for Williams. Travis Hill again. Boy, is he a player. He's always around the football. He's always grabbing. He's stripping the football. He plays that perimeter. He contains about as well as anybody. But he keeps his outside free and keeps that inside out leverage. He's only a sophomore. Really takes the heat off Mike Kroll on the other side. Second and ten. McKinley and Williams in the backfield. Quick pass across the middle. Out of the way. Kroll almost got it on the deflection. Mike Petko put a paw on it to spoil the Sooner plans. That should never happen. He's only 6'2", Petko is. Time this one perfectly, though. Never was faked. Went immediately all the time looking at Kale Gundy, watching his eyes, and as soon as it was thrown, he went up to knock it down. He doesn't get that ball, and Cooper's wide open. He's an intense player, Petko. Junior from Anaheim, California. Third down and 10 for Oklahoma. That intensity hurt him last year. He would overrun plays. Coaches had to sit him down, pull the reins a little bit. Showing blitz. Here they come. Gundy almost loses his footing. Now will break free and has the first down easily. Should be a flag there, hitting him out of bounds. And here it comes. A whole sea of yellow coming in there as Gundy picks up the first on an 18-yard run. It looked like Mike Kroll on the late hit. That was almost more flagrant than the Mickey Joseph hit out of bounds. Mickey was pushed. This time they actually went after Kale Gundy. Watch this now. First, he makes a great decision to pull it down and run. And once he gets into the secondary, he goes out of bounds. He's dead meat right there. You've got to stop that play, but instead they drive him into the bench area. Almost identical on the other sidelines. They drove Joseph into the bench to the Oklahoma defense, and now the Nebraska team returns the favor. It's unusual to see a guy like Mike Kroll taking that shot out of bounds, too. He's a senior. Outstanding player, only starter from last year back in that front five. Rated as the number one draft pick in the NFL. Tim, that penalty brings the football to the 43 of Nebraska. Oklahoma on that side of the field for the second time here in the first quarter. Came up empty early with a missed field goal. Inside, McKinley, maybe a yard. Pat Engelbert on the tackle, and back downstairs to John. You know, Jim, you were just talking about the hit on Mickey Joseph. I came out of the training room. They just x-rayed him. The good news is that there's no break. The bad news is that there's a deep laceration into the muscle, so he's definitely not going to play. But he told me a nice story, though, that Reggie Barnes, number 40, when he was going out of bounds, actually tried to grab him and hold him up. But they both slipped along the sidelines, and Joseph was the first one into the bench, thus the cut. Back to you guys. Second and eight confirms exactly what he had told us. This is Williams fumbling the football. 
and recovered by the Nebraska defense. Forty-four seconds to go in the first. And I believe Kenny Walker comes up with the football. This defense is so strong, so quick, but it's not big. What they do is they go to the football as well as anybody. Kroll again just strips the ball, and Walker jumps on it. Kenny Walker. But the play was made by Mike Kroll, the outside linebacker. Came up. His responsibility was the back immediately and just stripped him. Kenny Walker with the fumble recovery for Nebraska. Omar Soto in there at fullback. Scott Baldwin, the tailback on first down. It's Baldwin losing yardage, a loss of four. Scott Evans and Mike Coates combining. Tim, to finish up on that Reggie Barnes play, is a nice story by John Dockery, and that confirms what you had said earlier about how wet the field was down in the bench area before the game. Almost looked like they had wet it down purposely, trying to cool the field down. It's a very warm day here. It's expected to be in the 70s. Unusual for Norman. It also looked like maybe some coolers had flipped over in front of the bench, but the area was very wet, very slippery. You could tell it wasn't a hard hit. It wasn't malicious. We tried to say that early on. I thought he was pushed. I didn't realize he was trying to hold him up. Second down, 13 to go. And the end of the first quarter. Only a field goal in the first by Greg Barrios. Mike Grant was trying to call a timeout there. I don't think he realized that the clock had expired and the officials now are saying, wait a minute, is that the end of the quarter or did he call timeout? They're going to give him a break and end the quarter. So that's the end of the first quarter with the score, Nebraska 3, Oklahoma nothing. And we'll return to Owen Field after this message and a word from your local station. Why do fools? You'll meet some of the most beautiful black women in the world on the next Geraldo. The University of Oklahoma, founded 100 years ago in 1890. That was 17 years before statehood was granted. Here on this treeless plain of Oklahoma, there are 2,100 acres on campus, 300 buildings, and some 21,000 students as we bring you back into Owen Field. Playing field name for Benny Owens, who coached the Sooners from 1905 to 1926. Jim Nance, Tim Brand, and John Dockery extending warm Thanksgiving holiday greetings to you. We start the second quarter. Nebraska with the football. Second and 13 from its own 42. Mike Grant going long right away in the second. Way over the head of Johnny Mitchell, the tight end. Was a little contact down there. Sure, and the crowd wanted a, a flag. They thought there was too much contact, but number one, it wasn't a catchable ball, and you'll never have a flag if the ball is not catchable. It was way overthrown. Good no call. I'll tell you about Grant, he's come in with a lot of poise. Looks pretty talented. First half statistics, or first quarter statistics, rather. Not very impressive either side. 53 total yards for Nebraska, 68 for Oklahoma. Nebraska has the advantage in time of possession with nine and a half minutes. Third down, 13. Across the middle, almost intercepted. Oh, what a great lick by Jason Belser. He took out Tyrone Hughes. He's an all-conference safety, moved to cornerback last spring. Dad played for the Kansas City Chiefs. Watch this now. He's just sitting back here waiting for him in a strong safety position, and boom, knows the guy's off his feet, never sees him coming. That's a great opportunity to take a lick, and that's a legal lick. You know what that does? It gets your attention. Next time he comes out to make a catch in his area, he's going to have his head on a swivel. He'll be looking for him. <laughs> Stiggy almost has it blocked. Otis Taylor, fair catch, called and made at the 13. It is three to nothing, Nebraska. The only points, Greg Barrios, 30-yard field goal in the first quarter. Quarterback Mickey Joseph of the Cornhuskers went out early with an injury, a leg injury. Sooners almost got to Mike Stiggy. Stiggy knew it, too. He could feel it coming. That's why he short-stepped it there and got it up. 
great pressure both sides of the punt return team. That was Greg Irvin flying past Mike Stiggy. You know, Jim, I'm a little bit surprised Gundy's not throwing more. He's only one for three, 18 yards. From deep in his own territory on first down. Running the option and hitting Taylor. The wing back hit him right off the shoulder pad. Lucky to recover that one. You know what he did? He took that reverse pivot, and as soon as he squared up, he could see that he was under pressure and had to get rid of it. Here's the reverse pivot. Here comes the pressure. Boom, get it outside. And Taylor wasn't even looking for the ball. Hit him right there on the shoulder pad, bounced up and hit him in the face. Lucky to get that one back. And even game two on the play. Nebraska doubling the time of possession on the Sooners. Jim, if you're the pitch man, you cannot take your eyes off the quarterback. You've got to be able to receive it anytime he feels pressure. Similar to the Colorado Ibone. They bring Taylor out in motion, go straight ahead, do they? Oklahoma and Brewer carrying the football about four yards short of the first. It'll be third and four. Joe Sims gets credit for the tackle. Interesting you say it is similar to Colorado's eye bone. They call it an L set. They run virtually the same play as you can run out of the wishbone. You've had the eye bone, the flex bone, that kind of offense, but basically you're still going to run the option. Anytime you run the option, the defense has to assign players to the dive man, the quarterback, and the pitch man, and when you do that, you're restricting what they can do defensively. McKinley and Brewer, the two backs, Taylor in motion, third and four. Short side of the field, they'll run it. Brewer has the first down. Look at him go past the 40. And near midfield before Bird bumps him out. Mike McKinley, the fullback, gave him a clearing block, Timmy. And Brewer picks up 32 yards. Boy, watch the block in here and here, and watch the fullback come and get one. Here they come right away. They'll roll it, and they'll rock it. McKinley's number 31 gets the block on the corner. Bang, right there. Knock him out. How about the block by Larry Medice? The right guard pushed everything back inside, and once Brewer got outside, then only the pursuit angle stopped him. Boy, what a block by Mike McKinley, though, the fullback. Those two fullbacks alternate, and what that does is it gives these guys freshness in the fourth period. Here he is running the ball now. And look at him go. Fumble on the tail end of it. Looks like Gundy, of all people, recovered it. Two fumbles on this series. They got them both back. I guess the word from the bench was, let's give McKinley the football. It was such a good block the play before. Let's feed him a little bonus. It's an interesting situation as you watch him run here and watch his extra effort. They say Kenyon Rasheen is the more complete player, the more athletic player, better blocker and runner, but McKinley is the stronger and keeps Rasheed fresh. But I'll tell you what, he's not a bad runner or blocker in the last two plays. The recovery by Gundy, second down three from the 40 of Nebraska. That's McKinley again. And the big fella picks up the first. Jim, these two fullbacks have run for a combined over 900 yards. It's a great luxury to have, especially in this type of offense. They'll trap with the fullback, they'll block the fullback, and they'll also pressure that middle. Again, I tell you, Colorado had success up the middle in the fourth period when the game was on the line against Nebraska, and Oklahoma's doing that now. Cale Gundy says beating Nebraska won't make our season, but it would help ease some of the disappointments we've had this year. Trailing 3-0. Sooners on the drive here early in the second quarter. Fake. Gundy has it. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Travis Hill stayed out there with him. So did Kenny Walker. Saw the athleticism of the young sophomore outside linebacker, Hill, who was the contained man, did his job, but he overran the play, and Gundy came under him. But he was quick enough and strong enough, Travis Hill was, to get back and make the tackle. They believe Travis Hill, you're looking at him in the Nebraska defensive huddle. He'll turn out to be another Mike Kroll. He plays opposite Kroll on the outside, outside linebacker. Second down, 10. Gundy, short drop. Great protection, going long for Cooper, and touchdown, Oklahoma! A 
36-yard strike. Gundy to Adrian Cooper. And the six foot six tight end showing great agility coming back over the other shoulder to make the diving grab in the back of the end zone. Lasher adds the PAT, and Oklahoma has the lead 7 3. Number one, look at the protection he gets from Wallace, Medice, and Sawatsky right in front of him. Four and a half seconds Gundy has right here to throw this football. Finally goes to his tight end. Now, watch the adjustment he makes. Looks over his right shoulder, comes back for his left shoulder. I wasn't sure he had possession. I don't think he was sure he had possession. He definitely bobbled the football. Look, it's up on his shoulder. He's across the plane. Now, does he have possession? Yes. Brings it in, tucks it away. Touchdown, Oklahoma. That's a great play by Adrian Cooper. Tremendous adjustment looking back into the sun to make that catch. Giants, Eagles, Sunday. Ouch. At BASM, we don't make the house. We make it warmer. We don't make the suit. We make it racier. We don't make the meal, we make it healthier. We don't make the music, we make it clearer. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. Home without it. Kale Gundy throws the touchdown pass. He has now thrown for 839 yards on the season. As you look at the graphic, top passing rookie seasons. This is not for just freshmen. This is guys in their first year as quarterback, like Mildred, ineligible as a freshman back in those days. Adrian Cooper making the touchdown, Jim. He's six foot six, has that long stride, and here's Tyrone Bird, is only 5'11, shorter guy, very quick, but can't keep up with him stride for stride. And certainly can't go up. That's what they call that Kale Mary pass. <laughs> Instead of Hail Mary, Kale Mary. That worked at the uh, end of the first half against Oklahoma State. Same combo, Gundy and Cooper. Through the back of the end zone, Nebraska will start from the 20. Trailing now 7-3, and we take you to John Dockery. You know, Jim, you and Tim were uh, wondering about the wetness on the field and why it was done. Remember Mickey Joseph slipping, going into the bench and hurting himself? Well, he's gone for the day, as I said, a laceration, not a broken leg. But talking to some of the folks around here, maintenance folks, they often put water on artificial turf, especially as it starts to wear down, because it gives the athletes a better traction on the turf. But you know what's happened sometimes? Sometimes the water drifts off the field and collects along the bench, and that's what might have happened on that play. Back to you. Mike Grant is the quarterback. Number one, handing off to Baldwin, and a four-yard pickup. You know, since Mickey Joseph's gone out of the game, Nebraska's rushed for only 20 yards now. I'm surprised that would give you better traction. I thought it was a little bit slick down on the field as you look at the total yards for Nebraska and Oklahoma. Oklahoma with the advantage, mainly because of that last drive. A lot of the players I was talking to, Duell Brewer down there on the field, a lot of them are just wearing tennis shoes, not AstroTurf cleats. Second and six, Tyrone Hughes offset on a wing, now in motion. Grant will run it, keeping it off the option, and Bowden had him by the knees. When the quarterback comes down the line, any kind of penetration that the defensive lineman can get disrupts the option play immediately because the quarterback, who is the trigger man on the option play, can feel that pressure and gets a little bit discombobulated. Watch this. He feels the penetration right there, now tries to cut back in. Never even looked out for his pitch man. He thought the pressure was coming in such a way that he had to turn it up quickly to make positive yardage. Tom Osborne and Nebraska with 10 minutes to go in the second, trailing 7-3, facing a third and three. Grant now dropping back, lofting it for Turner incomplete. Charles Franks came up. Talking about footsteps and hearing them. Tim, that ball should have been caught. Grant dropped, felt the pressure coming after him and just put a soft touch on it. Franks definitely disrupted that play by coming hard. Boy, Nate Turner's got to make that catch. No excuse for that. He wasn't even looking into the sun. He was looking back away from it. Otis Taylor waits for Mike Stiggy. Stiggy, a 3.7 grade point average. Three veterinarian major. 
And a fair catch made by Taylor after a 39-yard punt. Well, the Sooners were sizzling on that last possession. They'll come back with the football. Quote. Celica, one of the most eye-catching cars of the year. Auto Magazine. The performance is stunning. Sports Car International. Unquote. The 1991 Toyota Celica. Enough said. You can search far and wide and never find an easier place to bank than B of A. We not only have more branches and full-service ATMs, we also have more people to give you the efficient service you deserve. So don't go out of your way to bank. Come to a bank that goes out of its way to make things easier for you, 24 hours a day. Gary Busey, Ruben Blades, Maria Conchita Alonso, and the Predator 2, rated R. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Well, all the Nebraska big red fans. Oklahoma with a 7-3 lead over Nebraska. This week they announced the All Big 8 team. Colorado had 11 players on the All Big 8 team. And Nebraska, six. Johnny Mitchell, the freshman tight end, punt on the offensive line. Walker, Kroll, Tyrants, and Cooper on D. And for the Sooners, well, Scott Evans was back again for the third time. He was the only member. Scott Evans, defensive tackle. Half the team, though, all Big 18, belong to the Buffaloes of Colorado, the conference champions. First and 10, Oklahoma from the 35. Straight ahead with Rashid. Gain of about four. You know, Travis Hill is about as active as I've seen an outside guy all year. He's only a sophomore, but evidently, they're trying to run away from Kroll and they're going in the direction of Travis Hill and he's been in all kinds of tackles. He's put the pressure on Gundy. He's having a marvelous afternoon thus far. Second down and six. Brewer runs right into Petco. Mike Petco makes the hit. Set up third and about four. This Nebraska defense has had some problems this afternoon. Having a tough time keeping things in, in perspective here with Oklahoma's offense. They lead the Big 8 defensively in pass defense, total defense, scoring defense, but Oklahoma's been moving on them. Third and three for the Sooners. Brewer again. And he's going to be short of the first by about a yard. Pat Tyrants and Mike Petko make the hit. Fourth down. Fourth down will bring out Riddell to punt. 7 3 lead for Oklahoma midway in the second quarter. Riddell averaging 41 yards a punt. He's had one block this year. A good punt. Fair catch called by Hughes and made at the 17. 40-yard punt for Riddell. And the 9-1 and one Cornhuskers, ranked 10th in the country, will come back on offense, trailing 7-3. You know what it takes to get ahead these days? 
Neither do I. Times have changed. Excess is out. Value is more important today. Careers are in, but family, friends, that's what it's all about. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. Introducing the all-new Toyota Tercel, now with more room, more power. We may not have all the right answers, but we found the right car. New Tercel, one new value you can drive. It's simple. New age. Now on video cassette. They knocked off number one, Notre Dame. Now Penn State is bowl bound and primed and off to tackle Pitt. The 100th meeting of these perennial powers, Saturday. Well, we've got our gang from the college football today out here celebrating the Thanksgiving weekend with us. You know, Andrea Joyce used to work down in the Southwest, just south of here, in fact, in Dallas. And Andrea is down on the sidelines. What's coming up at halftime, Andrea? All right, Jim, coming up at halftime, will the real number one please stand up? Mike and I will take a look at the national championship puzzle. We will tell you about a star quarterback and his remarkable story of survival and the tale of a lineman with a double life. All that and more coming up at halftime. Now let's see if the Nebraska Cornhuskers can get their running game going. Let's go back upstairs to Jim Nance. All right, Andrea, we'll look forward to that coming up at halftime. <laughs> Little boomer sooner for you. It's Oklahoma in front, 7-3. Leotis Flowers is back in the backfield. He's got four carries, only six yards thus far. Omar Soto, junior from Miami, running into Stacy Dillard. Credit Stacy Dillard on the tackle. Just waiting for something to happen here, something to explode. Both teams not really getting a whole lot done point-wise. 7-3 Sooners with 7-19 remaining first half. Right now, Grant is 2-for-5, 16 yards. He's missed his last three passing-wise, and the rushing game hasn't been electric thus far. Second and five. Flowers, no gain. Corey Mayfield. Big old number 46, Mayfield. You could hear that hit up here. Trying to make his eyelids like window shades. <laughs> One of the healthy players on this Oklahoma defense that is very thin. They do not have much depth. Chris Wilson, we mentioned, is out with a foot sprain. Has not been a dominating defense all season long. No, it hasn't. Proctor Land with a broken thumb. And Mayfield's a former defensive end. They moved him over. Third and five. Grant. Whoa! What a hit on Turner. Ho! Oh, Reggie Barnes. They may call that a completion and a fumble. I don't know how they could call it a completion. It happened so quickly, it looked like it was there and gone. But what a knock by Barnes. It is. It's Oklahoma football. Oklahoma football at the 13. This will count as a reception and then a jarring fumble. He took two steps with the football, so it's a good call. But, oh, what a hit by Reggie Barnes. Frank Blevins scooped up the football, and Oklahoma is set up at the 13. This will put your eyeballs in your forehead. Watch this. Bang! Receiver never even had a chance to look around. Turner, we told you his head would be on a swivel when he comes around that middle. He may go back and beg off next time. May permanently be on a swivel after that one. Dewell Brewer. to the three near a first down may score here Jim give a lot of credit to Reggie Barnes because I think that hit fired up the Oklahoma offense everybody's pumped the crowds back in the game now keep in mind when that receiver gets the ball he's got to have control to make a football move according to the rules he's got to be able to advance it both feet they said that he had it long enough one two steps and then the hit came and knocked it loose Kale Gundy has run it in four times this year for touchdowns. Second and less than a yard. Rashid will have the first. It'll be first and goal for Oklahoma. You know, the first quarter, it was like a library in here. You, the silence was almost deafening. It was a quiet crowd. Now, all of a sudden, they're starting to get back into it. 
Well, we talked to the coaches the last couple of days, and they said one thing about this series, it's always smash mouth football. That's a great indicator right there. Wow, that was fun to watch. Well, from, from our viewpoint, it sure looks like a first. They may measure for it. Bring them out. 5.30 to go in the second. 7-3 Sooners, and they're about to go in again. Yes, clearly a first down for Oklahoma. Beautiful day, although they turn on the temporary lights around the stadium. Pretty will, they, good. will they add to that total? Pretty good graphic right there. Rushing yards now. Oklahoma's got 119 yards running the football. Nebraska just 49. Keep in mind, Nebraska's still talking about a possible national championship. They say if they go 9-1 and one and beat Georgia Tech in the bowl, if they're unbeaten, they've got a shot if Notre Dame and Miami both win in their bowls. First and goal, Rashid short of the goal. So I guess the point we're trying to make here is Oklahoma the underdog in this ball game, and yet they're, they're forcing the action. I got to think at this time of the year, being 10th in the country, it's very close to impossible for Nebraska to win that national championship. Jim, but it's been a wacky year. I can remember a couple of weeks ago, we're doing the Colorado-Oklahoma game, and we wrote Colorado out of the script. We said, hey, there's no shot now. They, they've got to be a race from the national title contention. Now here they are, number one. Second and goal. Gundy keeps, and Gundy does not score. At least not yet. There it is. Yes, he passes. <laughs> Squirming at the bottom of the pile and getting it across. Once the lineman loses, the linesman loses sight of the ball carrier, he's got to come in and see where the push ended. Now, if this was an NFL game, I'd say they want to review it. <laughs> but there is no instant replay in college. It's a timeout called by Nebraska. Nebraska calls a timeout. Mike Petko heads to the sidelines along with Tyrone Bird. Not enough players, you think? I just counted them. It looked like they had enough. I was counting to see if they had too many, but everything's all right. You know, the point I was trying to make, though, the delay on that touchdown was not so much that they were waiting. It was that they didn't see it. All right, right here, the linesman on both sides of that goal line lose sight of him. He's completely surrounded by his own players and defensive players, so they've got to now close in on the pileup and see where Gundy's penetration ended up. And right there, he's across the line. It's a touchdown. Look at old number 88 right there in the white. Mike Kroll, he's right on top of him. Here's the view the linesman has. There's the push. Now come in and see where he ends up. Kale Gundy just kept going, following big old Randy Wallace and Medice and Sawatsky in there for the touchdown. Hey, watch this. Watch Gundy now, the quarterback. All right, now he's underneath. Now just watch him worm. First of all, his knees aren't touching. See? I'll tell you what, now they are, but he's already across. That's a great job of keeping your knees off the ground until you're across the goal line. <laughs> Look at Kroll in there, Paul, and trying to get the ball away. Lasher. He's already in. Lasher's extra point. Good for the 91st straight time. 91 straight extra points successfully made by Lasher. 14 to 3, Oklahoma. Time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award winners. And the winners are Pat Tyrons from Nebraska, a 3.45 pre-med major, and very active in his community. Say no to drugs campaign, frequent speaker to community groups. And from Oklahoma, Jeff Miller, senior offensive tackle from Bakersfield, California. Active also in that Say No to Drugs campaign. First team all academic big eight. So congratulations to both gentlemen as Toyota, Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Jim, there are a lot of schools in the country that would challenge this statement, but as far as the games and teams we've seen, 
Nebraska ranks right up there as the library award team. They spend a lot of time in the library. Their average grade point average is right up near three point out of a 4-0 system. I think they had seven players make academic all Big 8 Nebraska. They did, and a lot of other guys that are awfully close. Saw that graphic, Oklahoma, 107 yards against 15 for Nebraska. Here's the all academic guys you were mentioning. That's all, impressive. Yes, yeah, all seven of the Nebraska players with a grade point average well over 3.0. We're not talking about basket weaving either. There's some pre-med guys in there, engineering guys. 14-3 lead, and Riddell drives it all the way toward the back of the end zone, and Nebraska will again begin from the 20. Tyrone Hughes down the ball in the end zone, and we'll come back to the 20. Huskers have it there, first and 10. Well, it's the day after Thanksgiving. Hope you enjoyed all the turkey and trimmings yesterday, and we sure did down here in Norman, Oklahoma. We're at Owen Field. Jim Nance, along with Tim Brand and John Dockery, 14 to 3. The Sooners trying to spoil it for 10th ranked Nebraska. You're not big on your yams, though. You didn't like your yams, though. No, but you sure took care of them. Scraped <laughs> them right off my plate. Grant rifles one complete to Bostic for a first down. That one had some zip on it. 14 yard gain, Grant to Bostic. You just joined us. The starting quarterback for Nebraska went out on the second series with a lacerated leg after being bumped into the Oklahoma bench. Mike Grant has been the quarterback the rest of the way. He is, by the way, backed up by Tom Hawes, who has thrown only three passes all season. Jim Mickey Joseph left as the leading rusher, too. He had one carry for 13 yards. Nebraska has only gone 49 yards on the ground. That pass play to Bostic picks up the Huskers' first first down of the you second quarter. the clock to 4.23. Well, this, the clock says 4.17. They're going to reset it to 4.23, so they're going to add some seconds there. Doesn't seem like a necessary stoppage in play, does it, at this point? No, it really doesn't. Are you surprised at the way this game has gone thus far? Really am, but I think Oklahoma's defense with several powerful hits across the middle. Belzer had one. The documented Reggie Barnes hit has really set the tone for Oklahoma today. Oklahoma is playing with a sense of urgency. I think Coach Gibbs knows that he's got to win a game against somebody big with a winning record anyway. Nebraska, Colorado, they've got to get one of those wins under his belt to take some of the heat off himself here. Well, Coach Gibbs, 37 years old, when he took the job, he's now 38. He's 0 and 5 against the arch rivals, Colorado, Texas, and Nebraska. 14 and 7 overall. The pitch. Flowers dropped for a loss. Defense shut that one down. James Good and Darnell Walker. See this guy right here? He's got to come up, make contact here, and then come up on the outside. And these guys all have to come down and help on the pursuit. They've got to force things, pinch things to the outside. Now watch them. Look at that. Outside leverage. Play your inside out. Come up, get help from the DB, and make the play. Flowers, six carries, six yards. There's James Good, who stopped the option on that play. Call it second and ten. Grant standing in the pocket, throwing and almost intercepted by Ray. Terry Ray, intended for Dan Pleasant. Terry Ray is an all-conference type player, started as a true freshman, very aggressive at free safety, supports the run well. He also, as you see, can play the, the run, but first thing he's got to do back there is make sure that the pass play is going to be a pass play before he comes and commits. That time he just sat back there, played soft, and went and played the ball and almost had the pick. He is the younger brother of Daryl Ray, a Sooner star in the late 70s, who went on to play for the Jets. Born in Belgium, speaks French fluently. Third and 10. Grant with pressure is picked off by Bowden. Corey Mayfield came in on Mike Grant, and Joe Bowden has his first interception of the season. 
Grant should have just thrown that one away. Sure, that sounds like the obvious now after you see the pickoff, but if you watch him, you'll say there's no way he should have thrown this pass. He's not set. He's not ready to throw. Look at him. He's in a backpedal now, throws as he's moving away, and look at the interception by Bowden. One hand, the big left-handed Paul, just grabs and pulls it in. He was down immediately. They say he's got more natural ability than any other of the linebackers there. Coaches say he's the next great linebacker at Oklahoma, just a junior. He is a key in that defensive unit. Well, the Sooners take over at the 46 of Nebraska, leading 14-3, and a timeout called by Gundy. Oklahoma's defense has controlled this game, and we said they have not been a dominating defense all season, but you have to give them credit in that title here in the first half. They're running to the football so well. They've taken away the pitch. They've taken away the outside. They're pinching the middle, and the secondary's playing very well. You know, the two teams are so similar that I think Charlie Sadler, the defensive coordinator for Oklahoma, said it best. He said, it's true football. When we play Nebraska, there are no trick defenses. There's nothing tricky here. They know what everyone's going to throw against them. That's on both sides of the football. It's just, as they said, smash mouth, people on people. They execute, we execute, strap it on football. But one thing that really I thought was interesting is when we sat in Coach Gibbs' office two days ago, and he says, last year our secondary hurt us. This year they're going to be ready to play. And he winked at us, smiled. He just had a lot of confidence. He, he evidently knew they were ready to play. Let's go back down to the Doxter. John? You know, Jim, as we were talking earlier in the game about the uh, deaf defensive tackle Kenny Walker for Nebraska, well, behind me, you might be able to see his interpreter. That's Mimi Mann, who will go into the locker room in a few minutes with Kenny and stand next to him as Charlie McBride and Tom Osborne give instructions. She will then translate it for Kenny as they go into the locker room. Okay, back to you guys. Mimi Mann, she's a great lady and has been very close with Kenny Walker here. Loss on the play. Kroll wrapping up. Brewer had the chance to talk to Mimi Mann and find out a little more about that special relationship helping out Kenny Walker here as his interpreter during his career at Nebraska. See big number 88, Mike Kroll come across. He'll make this play on the outside again. But speaking about Kenny Walker, he's just an inspiration to all of us now. He was a lined up linebacker, stand up linebacker, but he couldn't hear all the calls, obviously. He couldn't make the calls, so they put him as a down player where he just looks into the nose guard. You just saw him there and get hand signals. Second and 13. Gundy takes a hit after releasing this one. Ball is up for grabs. It may have been caught by Cooper. A jump ball and a catch by Oklahoma inside the 10. Jump the two Tyrones, Tyrone Bird and Tyrone Leggett. This is the second outstanding catch he's made today. This is not a particularly good throw. It's underthrown. The defensive guys come in. They think they have it, and they do. What happens is Cooper just takes it away from him. Watch this now. Here they go up. You see Bird and Leggett. Leggett's got it right there. It's in his hands, number three, and big old Cooper just takes it away from him. Boy, Gundy took a pretty good lick from Engelbert after he released it, but it's another marvelous catch by Cooper. And Allie Coop in Oklahoma is set up inside of the 10. And another Kale Mary from Kale Gundy. McKinley, McKinley driving and scoring for Oklahoma. the fourth touchdown of the year for Mike McKinley and it's now 20 to 3 Oklahoma with the point after to come to use an overused word intensity they're just playing with a lot more of it right now than Nebraska Lasher converts on the point after 222 left in the second watch Mike McKinley just drive the legs and bulldoze his way toward the end zone He's the strongest fullback they've got. He's got four carries now, 23 yards for the afternoon. You see he's just following Wallace and Matisse up there. Then he does the rest on his own. Look at this. He's just not going to be denied. Breaks out of the pack. Boom. Breaks a tackle and dives into the end zone. Outstanding run by McKinley. Got 
to love the schooner cam. These are the guys we want you to watch right here. Sawatsky, Miller, here's Wallace. He's going to follow those guys right up behind them. Watch this now. Motion, fullback, bang. Here's 62, Larry Matisse. Just stay on his back, ride him out of there. Big old number 70s, Brandon Houston, and then just dive into the end zone. Some outstanding play by those big guys up front. Asked the big lineman, said, does it bother you that they call you the big uglies? He says, no, he says, down there it does get ugly sometimes. You see the blood, the spit, the sweat, but it's fun. <laughs> they enjoy it. So Watsky's a former walk-on. Now he could be the best guard in the Big Eight. Remember when you asked that question to Tom Meislinski from Tennessee? He says, <laughs> some of the guys really do hurt our image. Yeah. Some of them really are ugly. Dell handles the kicking chores, the kickoff chores. Hughes will not run it out. On Sunday, the NFL Today joined Greg Terry, Leslie, and Pat. 12.30 Eastern time. We'll have a special look at the relationship between Coach Bill Parcells and his unbeaten Giants. They bonded together in the locker room and banded together on the field. They're unbeaten. And that'll be the last word before kickoff, which for many people will be the Eagles and the Giants. Plus other regional action. You'll have to check your local listings. Folks on the West will get the Rams and the 49ers. First down, in the round, Johnny Mitchell, freshman tight end, running with it. And a gain of 16 as they take out a couple of people on the sidelines. Again, you see that slippery turf over there, too. Looked like Johnny Mitchell was trying to step up after they rode him out of bounds, and his feet just went out from under him. He's an interesting young guy, isn't he? he Half really foot taller than most defensive backs. We had an interesting conversation with him last night. Ten catches, seven touchdowns coming into the ball game. One more, and he'll have the, the record, Johnny Rogers' record. He'll tie it. First and ten. Throwing on the run. Complete to Pleasant. That's his second catch of the season. And working on Jason Belser. Huskers trying to get some sort of drive underway here before the intermission. Trailing 21-3. Jim, they've got to. You talk about a sense of urgency. Nebraska's got only 82 yards total offense in this football game. We're almost at halftime. Oklahoma, on the other hand, is well over 200. Derek Brown is the eye back. And the freshman gets the run near midfield. That's a first down for Nebraska. Huskers have two timeouts to work with here as we come under two minutes to go in the second quarter. Grant over the head of Nate Turner. Hey, Jim, watch the battle that's going on up front between Corey Mayfield, the nose guard, and David Dell, the center for Nebraska. I mean, these two guys are going nose to nose and just knocking each other all over the football field. You were talking about those high GPAs. Adele, the center, Adil, the center from Nebraska, has a 3.93 in mechanical engineering. He snaps it now to Grant. Here comes the double reverse. Brewer has it. And what looked like a potentially big gainer. And that's only about five. Derek Brown. Closed down by Mike Coates, who's been playing with a bad ankle, but that time he had to come all the way from the inside, run to the sidelines to make the tackle. You're right, it could have been a big gainer. The only reason he got there that quickly was because he had the pursuit angle. So Derek Brown gains about five. It's third and five. 115 on the clock. Not sure who this is on, but Corey Mayfield was the first to jump. He may have been drawn over. 
It is going to be against Nebraska. So Mayfield must have seen the motion. He's been banging around, as you said, with a deal. And got a little bit antsy there. As soon as somebody flinched, he came across. First one to move was Terry Emmon. Third down, 10, with 113 to go before the half. It's Johnny Mitchell, and he drops the football. Placed it right in his hands. Boy, as much as we've talked about him and what a great receiver he is and will be, he should have had that. No excuse for that. He comes out in the flats. He wasn't even covered. That could have been a big gainer for Nebraska. Not only would have had the first, but they would have been down in the red zone of Oklahoma Territory. Stiggy, a former walk-on, will punt once again. Under no pressure. Big high punt. Gets the coverage team down there in time. Takes a favorable Nebraska bounce and is down at the five. George Akova downs it at the five. And as far as scoring in this game, Nebraska got on the board first. Barrios, the 30-yard field goal in the opening quarter. But here in the second, a three-touchdown explosion by the Sooners. A great grab by Cooper, 36 yards for the touchdown. That was followed then by Gundy on a one-yard keep. 14-3 Oklahoma. Another pass to Cooper set up a McKinley run from nine yards out. And it's 21-3 with 53 seconds left in the second quarter. But Oklahoma may have just made a, a critical error. They let that punt hit the ground, and now it was downed inside the five-yard line. Nebraska has two timeouts. Oklahoma has two with 53 seconds left. So if they can jam them down here, somehow get that football back, you'd never want to let that ball hit the ground. Ernest Williams and Kenyon Rashid in the backfield. Gundy keeps it and is smacked after about a two-yard gain. Matt Penlin on the hit. Coming up at halftime, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa on site in Soonerland. You know, I don't understand why Nebraska doesn't take a timeout here. You got them pinned. You can't lose anything. You don't want to take the timeouts into the locker room with you. Just call timeout, stop the clock, gamble on the next play, try to strip it and see what happens. I agree with you. Could have stopped the football or stopped the clock twice and made them punt the football out of the end zone. Absolutely. You go never can tell what will happen. They're just going to let them run the clock out and go into the locker room trailing 21 to 3. Gundy will just down it. Don't understand it. Well, the Huskers thoroughly beaten up in the second quarter. That's the end of the first half. A second quarter that was all Sooners. They lead it 21 to 3 over Nebraska. We'll be right back. CBS Sports coverage of today's CFA game is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Visa, accepted at nearly 7 million places worldwide. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And by Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Welcome you back to Owen Field. Media representatives from all across the Southwest know this does not have the interest of the game of the century back in 1971 when Nebraska won it, 35-31, in a matchup of one against two, or even for that matter, the 87 game when it was once again one against two. But it's a classic rivalry, and Nebraska has to come back strong in the second half, trailing 21-3. Here comes Oklahoma and Otis Taylor. Taylor shaking free. Finally taken down by Tyrone Leggett at the 24. Now, what does Tom Osborne have up his sleeve in the second half? John Dockery spoke to him. Well, not, I don't think particularly flat. We just had some things that went against us, you know, a couple big plays that they made, a couple turnovers. And uh, we need to make a big play and get something turned around or get some momentum. Anything special for the second half? Well, we're going to try to, we'll throw the ball some, obviously. We've got to get our running game going, too. 
Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Both have been non-existent to this point. From the 25, the pitch by Gundy to Dewell Brewer. Fumbled, but they'll rule him down at the 31. Reggie Cooper on the hit. I'll tell you something else, Jim. He mentioned the turnovers. Oklahoma, 14 points off those turnovers. And more importantly, they lost Mickey Joseph in the second series after a 13-yard run. And Nebraska, which averages 362 yards, has only 76 here in this ballgame as you look at the statistics. Grant, 5 for 12, has actually thrown the ball more than Gundy. Gundy's 3 for 5. So it's been an interesting concept thus far in this ballgame. I think both teams are showing a lot of speed. And thus far, the cutback runs have not been effective. they got to start cutting back and finding creases. Second and four. Randy Wallace will snap it to Gundy. Gundy keeps. Picks up the first. Fumbles the ball. And there's the break Nebraska needed. Tyrone Leggett on the recovery. Just that quickly. Gundy on the option reads it correctly and steps underneath the perimeter. Once he gets underneath the contain from Kroll, see there? Now he'll take it up, but he still hadn't tucked it away. He's got the ball on the inside instead of his outside arm. Now here comes the pressure. There's the swat that just knocked it loose. It was Kroll who came and recovered and knocked the ball loose with the big right bear paw. First turnover, second half. Nebraska in Oklahoma territory. From the 35, Mike Grant is the quarterback. Hands it to the fullback, Lance Lewis. And a gain of about three. Mayfield and Evans on the tackle. You're looking at Lance Lewis, a sophomore from Scott City, Kansas. I think he was a big man on campus back in high school. At the Kansas High School Track and Field Championships, he won the 100-meter dash, the 200 meters, and the shot put. That's an unusual combination. Should have seen him at the homecoming dance. <laughs> I say he's quick. <laughs> Picked up three on that play, second and seven. He'll lead the way now for Leotis Flowers who skirts across the 30 down to the 29. Jim, we're talking about the team speed on both sides of the football, and there's no question about it. You're seeing two of the quickest teams in the country here this afternoon. This field also has a very high crown, the highest crown that I've seen on a football field in this nation. So what you want to do then is when you ride running to the sidelines, you know the pursuit with their speed can track you down. Try to cut back because then they're running downhill. If you've got a good running back like O.J. Simpson used to do, cut back back up that top of that crown and try to cut back into the crease. Third and four. Grant, with great time, looks for the open man and finds him inside of the five. It's John Bostick. First and goal for the Cornhuskers. Grant now six for 13. They're passing more than I had anticipated in this game, and Grant just buys time here and does a pretty good job. They try to get him on the the knock up front, they don't make good contact, and he just drifts down the sidelines. Now you see the safety doesn't come over and help. Terry Ray gets caught back in Never Never Land and finally comes up late and makes the tackle, but he came in free. It was his own defense, found the seam, found the opening, just sat down there and made the catch. Bostic from Bellevue, Washington. He had a summer job once with the Nintendo company, was a test pilot for Nintendo. Every kid's dream. Sure, he's one of the Super Mario brothers. <laughs> And they're down to the two with Lance Lewis, trailing 21-3. This will be a big play for Nebraska to get into the end zone here. Not only is they, they trail 21-3, but it's not a great come-from-behind team. They very rarely have to come from behind. They don't have that outstanding passing game. That's why that big play to Bostic was so important. He averages 20 yards a catch and got it there. Turner joins Lewis and Flowers in the backfield on second and goal. Leotis Flowers easily scores, and back comes Nebraska. ninth rushing touchdown of the season. We're less than three minutes into the third quarter. Barrios drills the extra point, and the Cornhuskers take advantage of the fumble and score the touchdown. 
Talk about how valuable the fullbacks are in this offensive scheme for Nebraska. Flowers has eight carries, just 12 yards, but look at the blocks he gets here. Big, big block by Lance Lewis, 26, just kind of pushed him out of the way, and he took it underneath for the touchdown. Not long ago, one of the first Lumina sedans was bought by a family of five. They said they liked the gas mileage, all the room it had, and they liked the price. Since then, the Lumina sedan has quickly become the best-selling new car name in America. Apparently, a lot of people are winning with the heartbeat of America. That's today, Chevrolet. Now it's easy to win with a heartbeat. And as these slides dramatically illustrate, annual net profits are... Instead of presenting information in a way that just sits there, now you can make it come alive. An IBM PS2 with Micro Channel can add full motion video and stereo sound to text and graphics. So from classrooms to boardrooms, anything you create can be a multimedia experience that's truly moving. To get more impact, how are you going to do it? PS2 it. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly you were in charge of the annual swimsuit issue, deciding things like how the models pose and who gets the cover? And wouldn't it be great if the models brought beer? Really great beer, like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if later that day you all went bowling? Introducing Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Oklahoma has allowed its first touchdown of the game to Nebraska. Joe Bowden spoke for his defense. They were confident coming in. I, I mean, I'm sitting around thinking, I, they can't beat us. You know, I, that's just my opinion. I'm thinking, well, if we play up to our abilities, then they won't, there won't be an option game. And as far as the up the middle, you know, if we play up to our ability, there won't be, a, you know, a breakdown up the middle. So, personally, I'm trying to find out where the big player is going to come myself. I mean, it's just going to be a smash mouth football game, you know, and who's going to defeat a block and make a tackle. That's what Coach Gibbs always say. Defense is made up, you know, who's going to defeat a block and make a tackle. So if we play up to our abilities, I guess it'll be a zero, <laughs> a zero game, I guess, as far as I'm concerned. Young Joe came at him this time. You see him close down here. Here's one block, and then here comes a fullback and knock out Joe Bowden. Boom, hit him right there, take him out, and just let him go underneath. Lance Lewis with the big block and Flowers scores the touchdown for Oklahoma, or Nebraska rather. And let's remember it was only a 35-yard drive as Oklahoma's defense was backed up after the turnover. But it's 21-10. Otis Taylor will run it back now for Oklahoma. Oh, there's a stick. Penland on the hit for Nebraska. Eastern time. More college football action coming your way. Pitt, Coach Paul Hackett. Can he get his team fired up for Penn State? Well, it's a great rivalry. They should be ready. Penn State's won eight games in a row. And we'll be at home against the Panthers. We'll have it for you. Boy, if you can't get fired up for that one, Coach Hackett has really struggled this year with his ball club. That'd be a big win for him. They've got to get ready for the Nittany Lions. Good fake by Gundy his open man it's Cooper runs over one defender what a big day Adrian Cooper's having for Oklahoma ran over Tyrone Bird yeah you almost felt sorry for Bird big Cooper six foot six 260 pounds I'm only giving you the height and weight as a matter of reference because Bird who he ran over is 5'11 165 pounds here comes the collision no contest Big fast guy I'll run over a little fast guy every day of the week. <laughs> Cooper's a former defensive tackle for Oklahoma. Played there his first two seasons before coming over to tight end last year. Sets him up on first down. To Well Brewer bouncing around for a gain of about three. La Andre Anderson on the hit. How about the rushing distribution for the Sooners? Well, you know, we talked about the middle being soft. And in that fourth quarter against Colorado, we mentioned this right in the beginning of the game, Colorado had a lot of success against Nebraska straight up the middle in that fourth period. That's how they came back to beat the Sooners. And again, Nebraska, or Oklahoma rather, watching those tapes, have gone to the middle and been successful there. 
more or less away from Kroll and Walker. They're running it. Second and eight, Rashid. Well, there's Walker, Petco, and others. Andre Anderson. Every time I see Kenny Walker, I'm amazed. He's deaf. He reads lips. But remember, the linebackers wear mouthpieces in that huddle. He still reads their lips very well. He was a stand-up player until two years ago. He made a great adjustment. He had to get down on the three-point stance or down on the defensive line anyway because of all the checks, all the calls. He wasn't able to hear him, so they moved him down there, and now he looks into the middle for hand signals from Engelbert. Lost his hearing at age two after a high fever. Third down play. The pass well overthrown. Intended for Corey Warren. Shifting. Oh, it has shifted right now. It's just whether Nebraska seizes the opportunity or not. Tyrone Hughes, the only man back. Oh, Riddell got it away. And did he punt it? It went all the way into the end zone on the fly. 57 yards. Bruce Pickens down on the field as he came flying in there. Trying to block the punt of Riddell, and he collided with one of his own teammates, I believe. Absolutely. They come in. The outside guys are contained guys as much as blocking. They want to make sure there's no fake. They both laid out, went for the block, collided, and Pickens is still down. Turn back the clock to when the world was a gentler place, and you'll find yourself in Philadelphia at Strawbridge and Clothier, a department store founded in 1868 by two gentlemen who believed in the unique principle that you never say no to a customer. So if you go, expect to be pampered and bring your Visa card. Because at Strawbridge and Clothier, they still don't take their customers for granted, and they don't take American Express Visa. It's everywhere you want to be. Across the country, critics are cheering Dances with Wolves. Two very enthusiastic thumbs up. It's magnificent and visionary, say Siskel and Ebert. One of the great American movies of all time. Absolute magic. Movie making at its very best. And Joel Siegel raves, one of the best films of the year. Don't miss it. Kevin Costner, Dances with Wolves. Rated PG-13. Now playing. Life is the game, you know, son. You gotta think about making a living. Didn't you ever want to be a baseball player? Sure. Everybody has that dream. It's not a dream. You know, there's a lot of competition out there. One day, the most important thing in your world could be your tires. That's why Goodyear engineered the Invicta GS to help keep you in touch with the road. You all right? I'm fine. Of course, I'd be proud to have a ball player. Son. We like to say the best tires in the world have Goodyear written all over them. He's entered a dangerous new world. Guys die doing this all the time. But the people he left behind could pay the price. They have threatened your life. Wise Guy, Saturday. Next Saturday night here on CBS, live from the Downtown Athletic Club, the Heisman Show at 6.30 p.m. And I'm with one of the former Heisman winners from Oklahoma. They're great running back back in 1969. You won it, Steve Owens. What about this year's Heisman? Who do you like? Who did you vote for? Well, I, I haven't voted yet, John. It's coming up. I need to get my ballot in by next Friday. So uh, I, I have mixed opinions. A lot of good players. The enemy is a fine player. Dibner from BYU. Uh, Sean Moore from Virginia. And, of course, Ishmael from Notre Dame. And so I think it's a toss-up right now. I don't think there's any clear-cut winner. I'm not going to tell you right now who I'm going to vote for because I really haven't decided. But I know you're, you're leaning towards that running back from the sounds of it. Hey, good luck to you. Back up to you, Jim Nance. He said it's a toss-up, Jim. What do you think? You think he's leaning toward the tie? <laughs> tie is in Detmer. <laughs> I like Detmer right now. I do, too. And I expect he's going to really have some big stats tomorrow when BYU goes against Utah State. Might lock it up for him. Flowers for a one-yard game. And Joe Bowden on him, along with Tom Backus. I'm not sure Sean Jones is still alive either, but I mean, uh, Sean Moore rather, but Sean Moore had a great year. I wouldn't hesitate a lick to give him a vote. You know, I walked away from that Virginia-Georgia Tech telecast. I was 
at that point ready to get more from Virginia the Heisman Herman Moore may have had the best performance I've seen all year by one single player in that game Sean Jones wasn't bad intercepted Blevins for Oklahoma Grant the quarterback misses the tackle but now down goes Blevins at the 20. thrown pass watch 35 Blevins he's been playing with a sore shoulder all conference type player never really had to move much didn't even get back into the hook zone just stayed in his linebacker area and a big old 6-4 guy just reached up and used all that height he's got a six and a half yard wingspan six and a half feet wingspan just reached up that left hand and pulled it down he now has an interception and a fumble recovery in this game leading 21-10 Oklahoma right ahead Head they go up the middle with McKinley, who has scored a touchdown in this contest. Stoic Tom Osborne has coached more games in the Big Eight than anyone ever. More wins than anyone in Big Eight history. Still in great shape at age 53. Dr. Tom jogs about three miles five times a week. Hastings College, pretty good player himself. Second and four. Brewer off the pitch. Crowell, Crowell has him. Close to the first. Kenny Walker on the tackle as well. You know, Jim, it's been a very unusual game in that there really hasn't been a rhythm to it. Turnovers, of course, have been the big key thus far. Both teams still struggling to find that rhythm. Oklahoma's had the best running attack, but hasn't passed as much as we had anticipated. Nebraska, on the other hand, has not been able to run the ball and has passed more than we thought they would. Nearing the midway point of the third quarter, Oklahoma leading 21-10 and threatening. Pullback McKinley easily with the first. Watch the push on the offensive line. That's what makes this play go. Everybody comes out, fires out. Sawatsky missed his block, then comes back and gets another one. Tries to help out on the linebacker. But right now, the offensive line for Oklahoma is just doing an outstanding job. First and goal from the seventh. Nebraska here in the third. Lasher is good again. 28 to 10. Oklahoma after a seven yard run for a score by McKinley. Watch the left tackle right here. You know that's Jeff Miller, number 57. Comes out, just seals off the linebacker right there. Tire ants, and he comes right up behind him. He's working against the big eight scoring defensive leader, and he scores. your copier gets the best of you get a better copier I smoke but on this flight cigarettes are grounded my answer Wrigley Spearmint gum and that cool clean taste never lets me down when I can't smoke I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction it's um it's almost like cheating 
You get a good shave, and you don't get the, the, the negative side effects. I'm very pleased with the Norelco. It's close. I don't have any, no, no stubble, no, no, uh, feels like a baby's butt. Now, Norelco's patented lift and cut system has been improved to lift each hair and cut it even closer without the blades touching your skin. The idea of shaving is to get a, you know, smooth appearance, smooth skin. And if you're going to do it, you might as well be comfortable doing it. The new Norelco, a new level of closeness and comfort. I'm a smoker, but in my office, it doesn't work. No problem. I chew Wrigley Spearmint gum. That cool, clean taste fits any agenda. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. It's a celebration of three decades of musical artistry featuring the superstars who make Motown come alive. You've got to be there. Motown 30, what's going on Sunday at 9? After clearing the way with a great block to free McKinley, it was truly Miller time on the sideline for Oklahoma. Jeff Miller, a senior from Bakersfield, California. Jim, last year he was a backup guard. Now could be the best offensive lineman they have. They call him an everywhere player. He'll play anywhere on that line. Merv Johnson could be the best line coach in the country. It's been like the loaves and fish. He lacked depth, yet somehow multiplied the talent. One of the reasons is that guy, Jeff Miller. Riddell kicks. Hughes elects to run it out from midway through the goal. And look at him go to the 30. Tackled by Riddell, the kicker, at the 40-yard line. He was the last man. Tyrone Hughes had the beat. Oh. From five yards, five yards deep in the end zone. I thought this was going to be going all the way. Riddell cut the angle on him. Takes it up. Watch, he'll find the crease. Now he explodes. Now it's only Riddell, but Riddell, coming from the hash mark, uses the sideline, takes the angle away, and just keeps breaking down until he has him. Fake by Grant. Throws on the run. Intended for Mitchell and a flag. And a flag as Belzer and Dillard were in the area. If that pass is catchable, that's a good flag because it was definitely contact before the ball arrived. The thing that got me is the umpire was right there looking at it, didn't throw a flag. The flag actually came from the back judge who was back by the 30-yard line. Pass interferred on the defense. Here it is coming at you now. See if the contact is made before the ball gets there. There it is. He's already riding him. He had the left hand. See, coming out of the right hand of your screen on his back. The ball was definitely catchable. And Belser takes him down. It was definitely pass interference. Good call by the back judge. Football in the Oklahoma 46. Inside run, Lance Lewis. And a gain of about two. Dillard's on top of that pile. This Sunday, regional coverage coming your way, NFL-wise. Majority of the nation, however, will see the Giants unbeaten on the year against their NFC East rival, the Philadelphia Eagles. Other games, Chicago with Minnesota, Atlanta against the Saints, Tampa Bay waiting to get back on track against Green Bay. And you folks out west will get your game later, 1 o'clock Pacific time, 49ers and Rams. Second and seven. Grant. This time we'll run it. Comes up about four yards shy of the first. Corey Mayfield ran him down. Jim, I think Nebraska's a little bit shell-shocked right now. 28 points, the most scored against Nebraska this year. The offense is moving the ball effectively, but it's only been able to generate 10 points. Flowers, who averages almost seven yards a carry today, has averaged just over one. He has scored Nebraska's only touchdown, however. That was the one plus for him to this point. Hard to identify the player on the Nebraska sideline. If you just joined us, Nebraska's starting quarterback, Mickey Joseph, was injured in the opening minutes of this game. 
went out with a leg injury and will not return today. Nebraska trailing 28-10, midway third quarter. My college football experience has been both exciting and significant. Exciting in that it provided me the opportunity to continue my education, the team camaraderie, preparation, competition, joy of victory, disappointment, and defeat. Significant in that I've found these same factors to be essential in my career after sports as well as my personal life. College football will always be important to me. College football prepares you for the game of life. The injured player on the field, Corey Mayfield of Oklahoma, shaken up but now walking off under his own power and headed to the Sooner bench. Big third 